Do you remember your fifth birthday? No, don't tell me. Hop in my machine. Memories are odd things, and I'm not actually talking about my own childhood memory where I was chased by a chimpanzee on roller skates. I really mean that memory is mysterious. We don't fully understand how we encode them or store them or retrieve them, but we do know what it is not like. It's not like going into a filing cabinet and pulling out a specific folder. That folder is not going to change from time to time, whereas our memories do change. They're plastic. When we remember, we're essentially reconstructing the neural pathways that formed the first time that event happened to us. These pathways aren't always perfect. Sometimes our brain shoves in information that doesn't really belong there, so we remember stuff that didn't exactly happen that way. But as we learn more and more about the brain, we start to narrow down what memory actually is, and now there's even a technique to detect whether or not you possess a specific memory. You see, a Stanford professor of psychology and neuroscience named Anthony Wagner has come up with this technique using an fMRI machine and a computer algorithm. Now, fMRI stands for Functional Magnetic Resonance Imaging, and it's a way of scanning in real time, and you can detect blood flow in the brain. The computer algorithm looks at this blood flow to determine whether or not it represents a memory or a novel experience. Here's how the experiment worked. Wagner took some test subjects and put them in an fMRI machine, and he gave the test subjects a series of about 200 photographs. Some of them the people had seen before, some were brand new and the fMRI machine scanned their brains, the algorithm studied the blood flow, and tried to determine which ones represented memories versus new experiences, and it was right 75 to 95% of the time. Now this technology is incredible, but I need to stress, it was not reading the memories of these people, it was just detecting them. And I should also point out, it was not foolproof. In fact, Wagner himself developed a technique to fool the system. And all it takes is a little prep time and concentration. He taught subjects to mask their memories. Whenever they saw a photograph they recognized, they were told to focus on a detail they had not noticed before. So it was like experiencing it for the first time. And he also taught them to manufacture new memories. When they saw a new photograph, they would associate it with a real memory they had. And, as a result, the computer algorithm's accuracy dropped significantly. So, I wouldn't recommend using this particular technology for a lie detector test in the future. But it might teach us more about what our brains are doing whenever we attempt to deceive anybody. Little by little, we're understanding more about how our brains function. And that could lead to some pretty cool futures. Imagine the science fiction future where I am able to transfer a memory directly from my brain to yours so that you too can experience the childhood terror of a chimp on wheels. Now, that future may never happen. We may learn that memory simply can't work that way. But we'll also learn other things about memory, like how to treat people who have difficulty remembering things, and plus just learning about ourselves is really awesome. Now I have a question for you guys this week. What do you think of Wagner's memory detection technique? Let me know in the comments below. I wanna thank Toyota for sponsoring our show and making this possible. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel to join the forward thinking think tank, and don't forget to check out these other videos right over here.